Right, so here is the doorbell and it makes a sound when somebody comes to the gate. For example, there's the gate. And somebody's leaving, but because the tripwire is in the other direction, that does not trigger the doorbell. But now if somebody enters towards the gate, you can see there uh, he's backing up and we'll hear the bell. There's the bell. I know somebody is waiting at the gate. Right, there's someone pulling into the gate. And then I know that somebody has actually driven through the gate or is waiting at the gate. So this is how I set that up. Right, now the first step is you need to have an NVR that has alarm outputs. Right, now over here on this NVR, you can see there's two wires heading towards that terminal. Those are the alarm outputs. It's a relay output and it's labeled N01 and C1. So I've connected my trigger wires to my doorbell using that output. So these two white wires is simply just a normally open connection. And when I touch those two wires together, I'm ringing the bell. Right, so over here I have a COCOM intercom system. And I'm not using the intercom at all. I'm just using the buzzer from the intercom. So if I flip it over on this model of COCOM door buzzer or door phone, these two terminals over here, that one and that one, are the trigger wires for the doorbell. For example, if I short it out, we can hear the doorbell ring. So these are the two wires which simply get wired to the output of my NVR. Now the setup can be done via Smart PSS or it can be done using your web browser or even directly at your NVR. I'm just going to show the web browser and I'll also go to Smart PSS because it's easier to navigate the playback. Right, having a look at the AI side here, I'm going to go to parameters and then I go to IVS. Right, so now I've got to select the camera that has IVS enabled or built in. And in this case, it's my camera four. Now I've already selected or I've already made some rules, but I'll walk you through it quickly. Now, for example, rule three, as you can see, I've created a tripwire over there. If I clear the rule, I can just demonstrate. I just draw the rule. I'll just put my mouse there and go across like that and I'll click again and again, and then I'll right click. And now it's showing me in that direction. I wanna change that to A to B, and there's my rule. Very important is the target size. So I'm now going to choose the target size, the maximum size, that's how big the object can be, and then the minimum size. The minimum size is is set by playing with this little square. Why this is important is if a bird is sitting here or walking across, then the alarm will activate and I don't want that. So I'm going to select the size to be about that. Also in a rectangle, so that if somebody is walking, it will pick up while a plastic bag flying in the air won't be picked up as an intruder. Right, so there we go, I've set the size. So only objects that are bigger than this size will initiate the trip wire. Now I go over here and it's asking me the period. When do I want this to be activated? Maybe you don't need it after hours. Maybe you only want to use it during business hours since it's a gate. Uh, maybe you don't want the bell ringing at three o'clock in the morning if, if a car approaches your driveway and it was a mistake. They were just reversing, for example. So you can set the times when this is activated. Now, the next thing is the post record. For how long do you want it to continue recording after the trip wire was activated? And then more importantly now is the alarm output. Now, those are the relay connections. Yours may be different. You may have only one. You may have four. You may have two and all I need to do is firstly check that box saying general alarm and then I need to choose the correct alarm output. If you'd like to see a detailed video explaining how to do this, uh, please check out my playlist on Dawa videos. Right, so I've got the latch set here for one second. Why one second? Because I only need to trigger the doorbell by touching the two wires very quickly and the COCOM doorbell automatically initiates that whole dun dun sound. If you want to have a 
buzzer, for example, and you connected a 12 volt battery and then a buzzer, and maybe you wanted to go like almost like an alarm, well, maybe you could set this for three seconds and it could buzz for three seconds. Keeping in mind that the NVR does have its own buzzer. I did not play it for you, but if somebody came to the gate and the tripwire was triggered, then the NVR's buzzer would also make a sound. It is on on this unit and it's that same buzzer that you hear normally when the NVR reboots. It makes that dit -dit 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 type of sound. Right, then it's asking you which channel to record. You can also set a to tour. I'm not going to go into that. So in effect, you've now set it up that it will chime your doorbell when somebody goes over that tripwire. And as I said, you can have many of these rules. So I did show you this rule, but if somebody walked even closer, you might want it only if they walk here. And the reason why I have so many rules is because shadows wreak havoc with these type of rules. If the sun is at this angle and somebody's walking in the street, their shadow will go over the tripwire and it will initiate the alarm. And that is why I have this additional rule here, because I've set it that at different times of the day, different rules work because of shadows. And that's quite helpful to stop for false tripwire triggers. For example, this particular one you can see has a different schedule, as opposed to say this one over here, you can see that it's set for all the times. You could set it creatively, you, you could match it to the weather conditions or you could match it to the sun, you could match it to the morning and afternoon shadows based on where the shadows fall and how the system responds to that and then accommodate them. That is why I have different tripwires in different places because of these shadows. And just make sure that on your alarm option, when you go to alarm output, just make sure that these toggle buttons are switched to auto. If it is off, it will override your alarm output and therefore your bell won't ring. So if yours doesn't work, just have a look over here, alarm output. So now I'm here at Smart PSS and I've set the search for only IVS. And uh, here we can see the IVS working. You can see there's the rules. Notice as the subject walks across, then it triggers the tripwire. And same with the vehicle. When the vehicle crosses, it triggers that tripwire. And um, now I'm going to show you some shadows. And what would have normally happened, these would have triggered. But because I've set the tripwires correctly at different times of the day, that did not trigger. Those shadows would have triggered the tripwire. You see, there's the shadow. That shadow goes right across the tripwire. So by adjusting for the different times of the day, you can see the sun, how this person casted a long shadow and then it would have initiated the tripwire. It used to until I made some changes. Just having a look at the footage from the web browser, a little bit of a different interface. There you can see the blue uh, colors there. I've just ticked the IVS option. There you can see it recorded the tripwire triggers. Just remember you do need to go to the schedule manager in order to enable the IVS and that it will record at the time that you need. All right, I have detailed video showing this. The point of the video was just to demonstrate the doorbell function using the tripwire. Thanks for watching and cheers.